All right, let's start talking about the hatch. Before starting, I had gathered a few references to help guide my design. Since this isn't a modeling tutorial, I won't detail my workflow, but I will time lapse all of it to kind of give you guys an idea of how I would approach something like this. When I was working on the Viking tutorial, I wasn't at all paying attention to good modeling practices because the models are basically just for show. However, since we'll be importing this model into 3D code, we need the model to be closed and modeled decently. What I mean by that is, since 3D code is a voxel based software, don't worry, I'll go over that later on, we can't have an open mesh or holes in our geometry. One brilliant free add-on I like to use a lot to ensure that all is good is actually a 3D printing add-on. It's called 3D Print Toolbox and ships with every version of Blender. All you need to do is just enable it under the add-ons panel in preferences. And with the mesh selected, you get to basically perform different kinds of checks. What I do when I need a mesh to be fully closed is I hit the Make Manifold button under Cleanup. Normally that takes care of everything for you. If it's not working, you might need to go back to your mesh and solve some geometry issues before hitting the button again. I'm gonna let the time lapse play out a little bit, but I'll be back in just a moment. So back to our modeling. I wanted the hatch to have a sort of handle system like you see in vaults. But to make the handles a little bit more interesting, I decided to add little details like these rings that wrap around. It just makes it look much more organic and natural. Like this was actually built by humans and not robots in a factory. The methods I'm using to add depth and details to the geometry is super simple. Just E to extrude and I to inset. I'll let the time lapse play out for a little bit and we'll get back to you once I start working on the base of the vault. Uh, before we start with the base though, I just basically copied the handles around to save a bit on time. I went for a three handle system because I thought that would be the most unique idea. I mean, usually you see four handles, don't you? <laughs> and yeah, here we are. All right, so the base isn't much different, but I basically moved on to another type of reference, which was this gorgeous door piece. I really liked how detailed it was, and if I remember correctly, this was mostly what inspired my design. When I was modeling this in Blender, I wanted to make sure that I had a big enough flat surface where I can later add in some carvings and Viking symbols. It's super easy to go overboard at the stage, but having big empty areas will provide a sort of rest area for the eyes and the design will just end up feeling a lot more balanced than having a thousand small details on every surface possible. I know I'm adding a lot of bevels and other details, which is probably not necessary as you won't really be seeing these parts up close, but the geometry count isn't that important since we'll be voxel remeshing it all anyway. 
it's not like using this in a game engine where the more optimized geometry, the better, you know? Once the model was finished, I made sure to voxel remesh the different parts by going into sculpt mode and using the remesh button. The reason I'm doing this is because 3D Coat is a voxel based system and it requires high density meshes. Well, not requires exactly, but I've had the best luck when I try to voxel remesh the model first. What I do after I've voxel remeshed the model is to either smooth out some edges manually or to smooth out the mesh overall using the smooth filter. These hard edges tend to appear on models that are more low poly, so it can help to either subdivide the mesh beforehand to get a smoother finish, or just smooth it out manually post voxel remesh. Also note that I've separated the meshes, so I have about four different parts. Also since I only need one handle to be fleshed out in 3D coat, I only remeshed and exported one handle. The reason I'm keeping a lot of the parts separated is because when I want to use stencils in 3D code, it's much easier to do so when you can hide certain parts. Or you might get some stencil parts on like areas you just don't want them. It's just that way so you don't have things blocking your view when you're trying to paint. You'll see why later on. So yeah, I basically just exported all separate parts as FBX and moved on to 3D coat. If you want more of a detailed breakdown of this method, go check out the lantern sculpting video that I did for Nudebeck. It's not one of our most popular videos, but I really feel it's one of the best videos I've made. Alright, so let's move on to 3D Coat! Okay, now that we have exported all of our FBX files, what we do when we open 3D Coat is to go to the voxel sculpting mode and just choose a blank canvas then just scroll down to import and then we can just start importing our meshes so select mesh so let's select our first part go open and let's see because i might have to increase the resolution here but if i just press apply and press no and go to Grow, let's have a look. Yeah, it's a bit low res, so actually let's un undo that with Control C. So what we need to do is to res up the layer to get this as a higher quality mesh. So you just press spacebar, go to resample, and you can see they've added a 2x. So if we now import and go to grow and zoom in you can see it's high resolution but I actually might want to increase that it depends if I change the shader hmm yeah we'll probably have to increase the resolution because this is going to be quite close to the camera so let's undo that again spacebar res up so now it's 4x and let's try apply again no and and yeah that looks good. That looks pretty good. Um, you can also change the different textures. I think I'm going to stick to this one and or actually probably this one and change it in Blender because this gives some really nice kind of worn edges and it gives us like this green and gold kind of tint along the edges which makes it seem like worn out automatically and I really like that look so um, yeah, now that we're happy with that, um, let's go to the import again. So import, select mesh, let's do number two. Um, we want to do that on a new layer, so you just press the plus button down here and spacebar, spacebar, res up. And let's import this part. The good thing is that it kind of remembers the position, so if you export it exactly the way it is in Blender, it will show up in the same position in the scene in 3D Coat. So yeah, let's see. That looks good to me. Let's apply the shader. Oh yeah. So let's go back to Import. Select Mesh. Let's see number three. Let's import this on a new layer again so press up spacebar press up and apply let's add the same shader and then let's open a new layer go to select mesh and let's add in the last piece open um 
Let's see, res up, res up, and apply. There we go. Look at that. Isn't that cool? <laughs> All right. So now that we have these pieces, we can actually start working on some of the stenciling. So I'm actually going to disable the 3D grid because it's very distracting. And let's start stenciling. So you have a few different uh, menus here. You have presets, which is for the sculpt brushes. You have stencils, which is what we're going to be using. And you have all well, the shaders and the color palettes and so on. But what we're going to be using 3D code for mostly is just adding stencils. And what stencils actually do, which is really cool, is that they kind of add this texture overlay on top of the screen. So if you start sculpting now, it will kind of project that texture onto the surface and deform the surface according to the texture, which is absolutely amazing. So let's go and add in our textures. I've created a stencil folder here where I've just gathered a lot of different stencils from the internet. But what you have to do is import these into Photoshop or whatever editing software you use and blur it a bit because by blurring uh, you'll get the best, more natural kind of looking results because if you import super crisp images, you're gonna kind of see a lot of artifacting and a lot of edges. It's just, it doesn't look good. So trust me, you will want to kind of blur them slightly for the best results. So now with Photoshop open, I'm just gonna start importing. So let's start with this one. Um, you can see some of them do have these kind of watermarks on them. So if that happens, I usually just try to increase the contrast. So you can do, you can press Control L, which brings up the levels, and then you can just kind of crunch these values together like this. And that basically disappears. So press OK. And what I'm going to do is go to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. Uh, so you can like zoom in to see how much they're being blurred and I usually like to go As far as this maybe Now you're gonna think that this is not gonna like come up very clearly on the model But it will so just press ok and just save that as a new version I usually just add blur and in 3D code, let's open up our stencil. So press the plus button. And if we navigate to our stencils folder, uh, let's find the blur version. Press that, press this. And usually sometimes if you've been messing around with other stencils, it, you can kind of change the sizing and everything and it will remember those settings. So if you want to reset everything, you just press reset. And to get into orthographic view, you just press five and then you basically just left click outside of the model and hold shift and it will align. So if you go to the side and do the same, it will align to the side. So let's go to the top, hold shift so that it snaps, move this a bit down and we can see the stencils are pretty big. So if we size them down, that's much better. And if you don't want them to tile, you can just toggle off tiling like this. So it can be a bit distracting because we have a lot of overlapping shapes. So let's actually start with the base shape and just kind of hide the other ones. So we have just the base shape, uh, the shape, if you remember. Shift and let's start adding in some of the patterns here. So let's size that down. Let's move that. Here you can kind of choose how squint it is. And if you've ever gone too far and you want the original shape, you just go to reset again. So let's size that down, move it. You can also rotate it here if you want. But for now, let's, yeah, I think this looks good. And, and the tool you need to use is build. So if you go to the top voxel tools, you'll find build. And you can choose to invert the textures. So I'm going to invert it. And if I start painting, nothing happens because I'm still on that layer. So I need to be on the correct layer. You see when I press it, it kind of lights up a bit. So be on the right layer. And if I start painting, you'll see it show up right away. You see that? 
But now it's a bit too tall. If you see if I go too far, it's kind of sticking out a bit too much. So let's go to the top view again. Let's undo that. And actually, instead of this mode, if we press E, we get a few different options. So we can use the lasso tool, which is what I prefer. You can also use the, the box tool. So let's choose the lasso. So let's start lassoing everything so we don't get whatever is on the side. Ah, shit, I got a bit of stuff there. But before I start using the lasso tool, I need to decrease the depth because it's really high. So let's go to 50 maybe and let's see how that looks. Actually, I changed my mind. I want to use this tool instead. So you just basically select it like this. And then connect the points. Oh, there we go. And it will show up like that. So if you now go out of orthographic view, so you press 5 again, you can have a look. And yep, that is still too, too deep. So go into 5 again and snap it back. And you can see it already snaps back to the original state of the texture and the top view. So that's very cool. So just press Control Z. Let's go for the depth of 10, maybe. Press 5 again to go out of orthographic view and oh, let's choose another tool and yeah, that looks so much better. OK, so let's go back to the top view, orthographic view. Let's choose our stencil again. So let's get it to the same size. I'm thinking, should we maybe repeat the same pattern or should we choose different ones? I think we're going to choose different ones. So get the rough size, maybe choose this one. I like this circular bit here. So let's size that down a bit and let's do the same thing. Of course, we need to choose build first and then start going around. A lot of these things are just trial and error, so sometimes you just have to try over and over again, but yeah. There we go. And what I really like about stenciling in 3D Code is that it just looks way more organic. If you were to kind of hand sculpt these or just use kind of like a stamp brush, I don't know, it just doesn't look as nice, I think. Um, so yeah, let's move on to the next one. Um, Let's try out this shape maybe, or maybe a bigger shape. I think this looks pretty nice. Let's size that up, move that maybe over here. Should we maybe rotate it like, let's make it smaller and try to rotate it this way. And I think it's taking up a bit too much space. So let's actually make it a bit more squint like that. Move it down. And let's start stenciling. All right, um, let's choose our next one. Let's see what that would be. Kind of like this triangle shape here. So let's try to flip that around this way. Let's try to make it, yeah, rotate it a bit more so it's a bit more straight and move it down. Oh, I actually like both of these. Let's let's include both of them. Yeah. OK. Being careful not to, like, come near these edges. All right. So let's see what our masterpiece looks like. Whoops. I always forget to get out of this mode, so just choose any other tool like Grow or something and then you can start rotating your camera again. Yeah, I think that looks really nice. Okay, so now I'm thinking like I want some of that patterning for the rings and I have a few stencils that are kind of circular like that. So let me go here. Um, like I have some of these like edges, which I think looks really nice. Um, hmm. This one is really nice. How can we incorporate that? I just kind of had these like disc shapes. We could have like these shapes on there as well. 
you know what let's not overcomplicate things so let's just choose something a bit easier so i'm I think i'm gonna choose this one um so let's go back into photoshop let's bring that texture in and we need to make it black because it will work better as a mask then and let's use this last setting that we use so gaussian blur that's maybe a bit too much so let's undo that and actually go to blur gaussian blur and let's reduce that a bit so if i zoom in a bit less maybe 0 0.7 0 0.6 yeah i think that's good so let's save that as a blur version and back in 3d code let's import that as a stencil so where is our blur version it is here open oh i actually forgot that this yeah okay this happens so what you need to do is you need to save it over a white background so let's just fill that with white and resave it again Du, 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 du. save okay okay and let's try re-importing that du, 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 du. there we go and choose that all over again there we go so if you now reset it and go into orthographic view with five numpad five and size that down Yeah, the problem here is it's going to be overlapping a lot of different shapes, so maybe we wouldn't want that. Hmm. I really like this like edge here though, so maybe we'll only use that. And to make life a bit easier for us, I'm actually just going to crop out that part. So let's go to the elliptical tool and hold shift and alt. And then just drag out a circle. Move that circle a bit. And let's just add in those bits that didn't quite make it. It's okay, like, if you leave a bit of artifacts behind. Like, it just makes the, the sculpt seem more organic, so that's completely fine. I'm doing this with the mouse, and this is so much easier to actually do with the tablet, but... Eh, I'm feeling lazy. So, okay, let's right click, layer via cut, and yeah, okay, let's save that. Save as PNG blur 01. Okay, now let's re import that. You can always like delete uh, by right clicking and pressing delete. So, delete yes. Let's delete that last one as well. And let's add in our new stencil, just the ring. All right, so now we're going to use another option, which is box select. So if we go to the build tool, press E, press this one, which is rectangle lasso. And if you just drag over now, isn't that cool? So that gives us a nice little kind of organic edge. Um, I think that looks pretty neat. So let's try to find another ring that we could incorporate. We would need something that's a bit thinner. Let's see, this ring is really cool. So actually, let's bring that in. All right, so let's repeat the last trick. So that's Shift-Alt, and then you just press and drag. And layer via cut. So let's blur this again. Actually, let's blur even more. So let's see, let's size that down. I was hoping I could kind of fit it around here. So if I size that down even more. It's very fun because you get to be very creative in like a very different way. Um, so let's try going to build and E, make sure we have this mode selected. And of course, if you want it as more of an indent instead of the inverse, you can obviously uh, modulate the texture so when I now drag because it's a white background that kind of gets included so everything that is white is going to come up towards us 
whereas everything that's black is going to go in. So when we're inverting, this is obviously white now, so this is going to stick up towards us. Um, but if we wanted to modulate, um, we could brush it in. So if we choose build still and go to E, we can choose a few brushes here. So let's choose a soft airbrush. Let's see. And we would have to probably lower the depth as well because it's going to react to pressure. So five. And you can just brush in the detail. And actually that looks pretty cool, I'm not gonna lie. So if we want to like go over again, because maybe it wasn't deep enough, we could either undo and increase the depth, or if we go back to the texture, we can just like go over another round. So let's actually do that. Yeah, I like that. You can see I got some of the edges here, but if you just zoom in and let's actually move it and maybe we can size down with right click and then just ooh, hold shift and smooth it out there we go okay so it's starting to take shape now um i'm quite liking the direction and you don't want to overdo it because obviously you can really overdo stenciling and it just becomes like the, the there's just too much visual noise um, but there is one thing that i wanted to show which is symmetry so actually let's let's bring in another texture or actually let's bring in this old one yeah let's say we wanted to repeat this shape uh, on these other ones if we press s we get up the symmetry tab and you can choose to symmetrize in the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. And you can also choose radial symmetry, which is really, really handy. So let's choose that. Radial order. So you see now when I start hovering over here, um, I, I'm pointing to my screen again. Uh, but you can see it like those other points moving on the other surfaces, if you can see that. Hopefully the compression of this video isn't too bad. Um, so if we just move our stencil a bit more and I'm going to invert it again and choose by pressing E, I'm going to choose the vertex lasso. And you can see the other points kind of reacting as well. So when I join this shape, it appears here as well. So that's a very nice way to kind of add some more detail and obviously if you want to invert it you can do that so i think this looks pretty nice so let's actually stop here i don't want to go too crazy so let's um actually bring in our second shape um i'm not too sure if i want to add a lot of stenciling on this one because we're mostly going to be viewing it from here so maybe at the top here hmm choices difficult choices um we can actually ghost hide this one so it's still visible but we can't select it and we can't sculpt on it which is very handy so let's go to the top view again and remember to save always save uh let's choose that layer so we make sure it's blinking yeah and ghost hide the other one and let's bring up our stencils again so let's bring up this one um I think something circular for the middle would look good. Like we've used this big one, but we haven't used this one. So actually let's move that down here. Oh, need to go into build mode. I always forget switching between these different brushes. So let's press E and make sure we have the right selection tool. Let's actually increase the depth because I know um, we set it down to 5, so let's set it to 10 and just repeat the process. Yeah, I like it. Alright, so let's add in the next part. So that's this triangle shape. So 
I purposefully kind of left these indented kind of areas because I was thinking of adding like lots of texture detail there um, and kind of keeping it relatively simple with just adding the texture here because we'll be seeing it from here. So yeah, so let's choose that layer, ghost hide the previous one. I have no idea if that's actually what it's called, but that's what I am calling it. <laughs> and let's bring up our previous texture sheet. Press reset. Yeah, these straight ones are really nice. So actually, let's use some of those. Um, let's rotate it. You know what? What if we just add runes? I think that could look pretty cool. So let's go back to Photoshop. reset and okay let's get started so if we again hover over the viewport with our left mouse button and press shift it's going to align to the side again if you're outside of orthographic view you just need to press numpad 5 again to get into orthographic view okay so let's size these down so we can get as many letters as possible so let's start with the top row and for each side we're gonna go down one. So you can see like how effective this is at like adding detail very quickly. Because sculpting all of this in Blender is such a pain, so I actually just prefer jumping into 3D Coat and doing it here, and it just gives it more of an organic look, and it just... It looks so nice, and it's so satisfying. And there we go. So if we press 5 and have a look at our beautiful creation, let's unghost the other ones. Yeah, it looks pretty cool, doesn't it? So let's add the last piece. I'm not sure if it needs anything. Maybe here at the the very front. So let's go to orthographic view again. Let's choose one of these circular ones, maybe. So reset. Uh-oh. You see, if I press the other uh, model, it jumped to that one. So I need to jump back to this one and keep sculpting. So if you start stenciling on, for example, you start your press here, it's going to automatically select this mesh and start your stencil on that mesh. So you need to always make sure you're on the correct layer. So you, if you want to avoid that, you can just like hide your layers. Um, but yeah, let's start and finish this up. Yeah, that looks cool. So in Blender, we're going to be duplicating this around to give the feeling of more of like an ancient hatch. So you need to kind of uh, rotate all of these three kind of levers, I guess, to operate the mechanism to open the door. So now that we are done, we can uh, select all of these. So you just shift select all of them. Right click, choose Retopo via decimation and press OK. You can basically choose the amount of polys. So now that we have this up, we go to bake, bake with normal maps, press OK. And here you can choose like the resolution of the texture. So you can choose 2K, 4K, 8K. Since it's going to be pretty close to our character, I'm thinking we should probably go for 4K. Um, maybe 8K, but I'm going to see how 4K looks first. So press OK. And when that's done, you can go into the paint room and then go to view. And here you can choose, usually this option is on, which shows you the high poly version. But if you press that off, you can see the low poly version and you can check to see that everything looks okay, which it does. So actually now let's go file, export objects and textures, and let's choose our texture mouse. So I wanna have PNGs for all of them. And here you need to make sure you have export geometry and export textures hooked on. And you can choose like what kind of textures you want. So I'm going to choose export color, export roughness and export metalness. I don't think I need anything else. Yeah. Okay. Let's press OK. 
Here we can choose where to export this. So let's just call it ancient hatch 3D coat uh, sculpt. And done. So I'm going to save this as a copy just in case. You never know. So let's close that out and let's go back to Blender. So back in Blender, we're not going to be able to see anything. That's because I have a lot of atmosphere and lights and stuff like that. So if I just unhook that, here we go. So this is our scene and let's now replace this hatch thing. So let's create a different folder for that. Actually, let's create in environment. OK, so if we go to import OBJ, Let's go to 3D coat meshes, um, 3D coat sculpt object, import object. And it's going to come in. Oh my God, it's so big. So let's actually size that down and R rotate. Just make sure we rotate it the right way. Scale it down. And one thing I realized since I kind of selected everything and exported everything, they didn't come as separate meshes. If I tab into edit mode, I wonder if I can actually separate these meshes. So let's try that. So let's select our mesh, press edit. So let's select our handle and this part and press control L. Ah, excellent. Okay. So you can see that it didn't fully merge everything, which is awesome. So let's select these loose points. Press Ctrl L to select everything that's connected and Alt C. Let's go back. So from the top view, if we can see anything. Yeah. So if you go to the top view, press Alt C, you can go into this ghost mode and let's actually place our 3D cursor here in the middle. So you can either shift right click and place it or you can just choose it from the menu here. So we need to shift D and if we choose 3D cursor now, we can press R to rotate. And if we hold in control, we can rotate by increments and let's try to line it up. So maybe about here, shift D, R, and let's do the same on the other side. So these, mm, actually no. I thought maybe they might not be lined up perfectly, but no, that's looking pretty good. So if we go out to that, yeah, okay. Obviously now it looks a bit shitty, um, but if we go into texture mode, it's going to look a bit better, but we're going to have to tweak some of the textures. All right. So now that we have this mode on, actually, let's bring up our textures. So let's see what we're working with. You can see some of these have been automatically added but they're not in the right place because this is roughness and, and it's going to specular so let's move that down to roughness and if we go to the material properties we'll have to do this for all of them so roughness from specular to roughness from specular to roughness um and what else what else normal is looking good but we're missing metal so let's actually Go here and let's go back to our folder because that's where we're going to find our textures. So this is the vault hatch. So we need to find that suffix vault hatch there. Let's go to metalness. Let's add that in. So you can just drag and drop and connect that to metal. And you're going to see that just looks so much better already. All right, let's go to the next one. Let's move roughness out of the way. Let's go back to our texture and this was volume 8, volume 8 here. So let's drag in the metalness, drag that to metal. Oh yeah. So if you want the metalness to be a bit stronger or weaker, we can add in a color ramp. So let's just shift A, add in a color ramp, add that in here. And now you can choose to increase the contrast there. Actually, let's twist in. Let's see what happens. I actually flip the values. I think maybe this might look a bit better because it looks a bit more frozen, doesn't it? And we can obviously change the color of this later on. We could add in, for example, in the hatch color, we could add in a uh, hue saturation and we could change the values. I think obviously we're going to go for a bit something a bit 
cooler like this. Maybe a bit desaturated. What if we increase the value, go back to our orange that we had and just desaturate it. So let's actually copy this. So right click, copy or control C. Let's go to the other ones. Control V, let's add that in there. And then repeat that for the rest of the ones there. Control V. And there we go. So I'm going to tweak this a bit more and I'm going to come back to you later with the final. See you in a bit. So obviously, since I've added in a new hatch, I had to adjust the paper talismans to kind of fit the new design. See, I'm just kind of still staying in the camera view, just making small adjustments here and there. And obviously, since we're working with curves, it's so much easier to kind of make these small adjustments. And if you want, like when you're done with these, you can kind of just right click and just convert to a mesh. But I kind of like to just keep these curves as is, uh, just in case I kind of need to adjust them later on. So you can see here that once I kind of put everything into the scene and went into the camera view, I kind of wasn't happy with the color scheme of the vault or the hatch. I felt like it just kind of wasn't popping out well enough because you have these like really saturated red rocks next to it. And it just, I don't know, like it just didn't pop out well enough. So I actually had the idea of what if I add a color ramp and maybe add in some of that red into the hatch design itself. And that just immediately made it like pop out a lot more and it looked a lot more visually pleasing and it just looked a lot more interesting in my opinion. So with the final adjustments done, let's see what it looked like before and after. Yeah, I mean, I think this is pretty much done. I mean, not done in the sense of like, okay, let's call this like a finished polished thing. But at least like in regards to being a 3D draft, usually this is as far as I would take things. Sometimes I wouldn't even take things this far. Like sometimes I would just make it even more rough. And then later on in the paint over, I kind of spend more time there figuring out the design and making everything look a bit more polished and proper. But I thought it would be useful to kind of show you guys like if I take things really far, like how much that actually helps later on in the paint over, like in terms of lighting information, color information, composition. So yeah, we're soon going to be focusing on the paint over in Photoshop. But in the next video, I kind of wanted to first show you how to kind of separate a layer. So how to like render things out separately. So you have the snow on one layer and then you have the character on one layer and then the rocks and then the background and so on. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this week's video and the next one should be out very soon. Thanks guys. Bye.